You know, every time I buy a MacBook Pro, I wish I didn't have the touch bar. Well, I'm going to show you a way to make that touch bar a lot more useful. It's time for Hands on Mac. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Everybody, welcome to Hands on Macintosh. It's a brand new show for people like me, and I hope you who love Macintosh. Over the years, I bought the first Macintosh in 1984. Went to Macy's with my Macy's card, 2,500 bucks for something that barely did anything. But I was in love, and I've had every Macintosh practically ever since. Didn't buy the big, expensive Mac Pro this time around, but pretty much every one since then. One thing I've noticed though that as the years have gone by, what was at one time, supposedly the easiest computer to use has become more and more complex, harder and harder to use. So I think this show is going to be a little bit about kind of cutting through all of the capabilities of the Macintosh so that you can understand it better and use it better. And we're going to start with the number one annoyance, as far as I'm concerned, on every MacBook Pro, the touch bar. The touch bar is a gimmick. Now notice, mine looks a little different than yours. That's because I'm using a touch bar add-on. If you ask me, if you've got a MacBook Pro and you've got a touch bar, you should run, not walk, to this website, folivora.ai. This is the home of Better Touch Tool. $7 for a two-year subscription, uh, or you can buy it uh, outright for $21. It's the best $21 you'll ever spend. It allows you to modify the touch bar, what's on it, how it works, what it does, when you first download it, though, it's a little overwhelming. Better Touch Tool has the largest preference screen I've ever seen. Let me just show <laughs> it. Go. It's, uh, there are settings eight levels deep on this thing. We can actually show it up here. I'll uh, yeah, swipe it in. It just goes on and on and on. And I frankly found it a little overwhelming. If you don't want to spend three or four or five or a day, hours or a day working on this thing to get it useful, but the very second thing you should do after you download and install it is install this plugin. It's called Golden Chaos. It is, in my opinion, 99% of what you would want your touch bar to be. And the stuff that doesn't quite work is easy to modify. So download and install Better Touch Tool. You can try it for free. And then go to the setting, the uh, community. Uh, community.folavora.ai and download Golden Chaos. I think without a doubt, this is the most popular Better Touch Tool add-on. Let's take a look at what Golden Chaos has done. Well, the first thing is it gives me a variety of settings for each of the modifier keys. And if you show my, uh, my screen, my uh, touch bar right now, Miles, you'll see when I hit the function key, it changes to function buttons. That's, that's kind of what you'd expect and want. In fact, that's the default behavior by Apple. But watch, when I hit the control key, it gives me a different set of tools, including lock and sleep, and it looks like I've got AirPlay on here. And, and when I hit the Option key, this is great. It gives me a whole set of window snapping tools, from full screen to in the corner, to the left, to the right. If I hold down the Command key, it actually duplicates my Macintosh dock. So if I have a bunch of full screen apps open, and that's the way I usually operate on the Mac, I can quickly get to the dock, not by hiding those full screen apps, but just by pressing the command key and picking the, the dock I want. And it really duplicates it. You can see the dots under the things that are running. Uh, it really is a nice uh, setup. So let's go back and, and take a look now at the preferences so you can see what I've done. So here's the different modifiers. There's command, control, option. There's a variety of other things which I uh, pretty much ignore. I go right to home strip. That's the thing you see all the time. And let me tell you the very first thing I do on the home strip strip, and it's kind of way down at the bottom of the home strip. I turn off, I might have even deleted it. I turn off Siri. I don't know about you, but the thing that makes the touch bar even more annoying is that every time I'm typing Siri, look at my touch bar, normally pops up right here on the uh, right hand side, right, right by my delete key. I hit it all the time, and Siri, I'm in the middle of typing, and Siri says, yeah, what do you want? Go away, Siri! So I immediately turn that off. No, there's no Siri. In fact, I make sure that none of the buttons over here by where I type 
actually do anything at all. I don't, I don't want them to get in the way of my typing. On the left-hand side, I've set it up, and this is not necessarily the default, but it was very easy to do. There's a full screen button that makes any window full screen. Snap, half left, half right, or just uh, open it up to not full screen, but whole screen. I don't know if you can know the difference. Full screen means I don't have a menu bar. Whole screen means it's there, but it's just it's just full screen. And in fact, show my uh, screen mouse because you'll see it's actually doing it with the preferences as I hit these buttons. If I go back, if I go out of full screen, I can go left, I can go right, and then that's the whole screen, and then that's the full screen. There's a sl slight difference, but you get the idea. So that's all indicated here as I zoom in. There's full screen, maximize window left, maximize window. Okay, that's the difference. Maximize and full screen. Maximize right. I've taken a bunch of stuff off. It's easy to disable. Just click the the air, the little eyeball and you can turn it on or off. The back and forward for the browser, the refresh for the browser. I like a kind of a minimal touch bar, so I got rid of a lot of that stuff. Let me show you the right side of my touch bar because I do use uh, this stuff all the time. Yeah. So this is one of the reasons I use Golden Chaos is because it's not immediately obvious. So this is the home strip on the left, menu bar on the right, and you see I have a couple of things. This is Caffeinate. It's actually taking off uh, a program called Caffeine. This keeps my system from sleeping, but it's a shell script, which is actually pretty good. You can add shell scripts, as you can see right here. Let me zoom in on this. You can add scripts from the shell and, and have them activate with a button. So this is one that just doesn't put anything to sleep. I didn't write it. It came with it. I use day one as my journaling. So that little bookmark icon, that's the day one script. I can mute the microphone. I can turn up volume. But you can see there's other things I have disabled. But there's connect to gamepad, connect to Bose, connect to Beats, connect to AirPods. Enable the ones you want. Disable the ones you don't. Volume up and down, I like. Uh, one of the th problems with the touch bar is Apple configures it. It's a slider, so it's actually two buttons to hit. You have to hit it, and then you get the slider, and you have to move the slider. That's a pain in the butt. Now I have direct control. I have three buttons, mute, up, and down. And I've got those all turned on, as you can see in the preferences. Same thing with brightness, up and down. There's a four-pixel spacer. That's nice. And I like having the weather in my touch bar. Show my touch bar. You can see I've got actually the 55 degrees and partly cloudy. And then when I pop it up, it'll actually pop up uh, a weather so, forecast. So that's kind of nice to have that built in. I also have battery percentage. What I like about this is nothing happens when I hit it. <laughs> Sometimes you want that. Remember, this is the area where Siri lives, where I always hit it by accident when I hit the delete key. So I've made sure that the, the battery percentage does nothing. And that's all part of Better Touch Tool. This is such a great tool. I'm not going to tell you how to configure it. Uh, I think if you start with Golden Chaos, you install it, you look at a few of the settings, you'll play with it over time. Out of the box, I think Golden Chaos is fantastic. It does everything I want, including quick full screen on all my apps. We'll talk about that in the subsequent episodes because I want to talk a little bit about how I use the Mac, including living in full screen mode so I can swipe back and forth between workspaces. But that'll be for another episode. If you have uh, questions or thoughts, you can always email me, leo at twit.tv. I'd love to hear from you. If there are things you'd like me to cover on Hands-On Mac, I thought I'd start with the single most useful utility I use on my MacBook Pro. Better touch tool along with golden chaos. It'll change the way you work. We're going to talk about the terminal we're going to talk about security gatekeepers next week. We're going to talk about using Brew to set up applications. There's a whole lot more to talk about. I look forward to seeing you each and every week on Hands-On Mac. Take care.